Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're taking a look at Kotobukiya's Belial Kips in 160 scale from Full Metal Panic. Uh, this is a pretty boss looking design, I gotta say. It's looking pretty manly for sure. When I was building this, I was like, dang, that thing looks tough. And it's very sharp and very edgy and very dark. And so I have a feeling this is probably a pretty appealing design. Now the one thing that is definitely not going to be appealing about this is of course the price. This is a pretty pricey kit. Coming in at 6,800 yen for its list price, that's going to be double the price, more than double the price of Bandai's uh, Full Metal Panic kits that are in the same scale of 160 scale. And later on in the review, we'll take a look at a uh, comparison between the two of them. But Bandai's kits are from Full Metal Panic Invisible Victory. I think it's a different series than what this is from, possibly. So I don't think they actually existed or like met each other in the same series as far as I know but I, again I, I don't really know any much of any too much anything too much about the background information so let me know about that what you guys know in the comment section but anyway in the meantime let's just admire how cool this looks and ignore the price and just focus on the fact that this is a pretty badass kit and I want to say a big thank you to the badasses at USA Gundam Store for sponsoring this review too. Again guys, this wouldn't be possible without their support so show them some love. Check out the link to their site in the description and you can buy anything there on their store with 10% off if you use my coupon code there, Zaku Aurelius 10 So show them some love and let's show this guy some love by taking a look at all of his accessories. First thing here is this action base connector. What you'll do is here on the back skirt, you'll remove that light gray part there and plug this into there. And then you can plug this onto your Kotobukiya flying base or a Bandai action base should actually work as well. And then for hand options, you can see you have these open, just kind of resting hands. And then you have these open, very extended hands like this, which are pretty awesome. You have two holding hands for the left and the right side. And then you have a single sort of like stabbing hand, very Master Asia-esque and just like the dark color scheme and kind of shape of the whole design in general. And these open hands like this and then this particular hand all make this kit really remind, really reminds me a lot of the Master Gundam. And also just because the fingers are also pointed as well, very sharp on those. So it gives me really, really a Master Gundam um, vibe to it. Then we have these little gun parts which will pop out of the forearm. Uh, you have two of them, one for the left and one for the right. Now while we're on the subject here, this part is a big problem of this kit. When you want to move the arm, I've found this upper arm part just explodes every time you try to move the arm. You have to, whenever you want to move the arm, be sure to hold it by this part. But yeah, whether you're going to be painting the kit or not, ultimately when you're doing your final assembly, I would definitely recommend gluing the two of these together. Just be sure that you don't glue them in a way that inhibits the articulation, but just because the shoulder joint is pretty stiff, so when you try to move the arm, it just that, that bit just pops apart there very easily, so just be careful about that. But as I was saying, you just remove this part. I'm going to be really careful with this now. Remove this panel on the back of the arm, insert the gun part there, then replace this back onto there. And you have that gun bit sticking out of the back of the arm. And this is another thing that's going to remind me of something else that really reminds me of the Obsidian Fury uh, from Pacific Rim. Just again, very black, very buff, manly design. And then having the back of the forearm pop out, where in the case of the Obsidian Fury, the, of course, chainsaw blade comes out. In this case, we have the gun there, but still, it's giving me a lot of vibes of other different kits as well. Then we also have these bits here, which extend out from the binders, but actually they don't extend. You just have to kind of parts form them. So these uh, light color bits on the front and back of the binders that are kind of hanging down in his armpit there, those extend out and you can open them up and put the other parts in there. I'll show you guys that here in a little bit. And then we have its main weapon, which is pretty interesting, pretty cool. We have the handle up inside there, so you actually have to take off this part and then get the hand in there around that, put this part there back on, close that back up around the arm. Uh, and then this handle back here extends out the back, so that extends like that. These parts open up like this to make this kind of like a, sort of like a big uh, bow sort of weapon for that. So it's pretty interesting. And then for a quick size comparison, here it is compared with your typical HG Gundam kit. As you can see, it's definitely taller and bigger. And then compared to Bandai's 160 scale uh, Arbalest kit there, so you can see it, it matches pretty well in scale with that. But even it's going to be bigger than the Arbalest and the Gernsback as well. So it's a pretty big kit. Definitely not quite as big as a 1-100 scale Gundam kit, but sort of in between there. All right, now real quick, let's just go over some of the articulation of this guy. So the head will go up to there. And you can see you have this kind of like the main head and then this other kind of part for the neck that moves along with that as well. So that's a pretty cool feature. We do have a pre-painted part, the eyes there. It's going to be really hard to see. 
So let me try to zoom in there so you guys can see this, but it's a little bit of metallic green in there for the eyes. It's very small, but it does add a lot to the design. Right, so yeah, the head moves up and down pretty nicely. It looks cool and all. Uh, side to side, it does also do pretty well as well. It can't uh, rotate all the way around. I don't think we can get it side to side more than enough like that. I like the asymmetry of the head. You have the uh, extended up all the way like that. I think you could probably cut that off. It looks like if you did want to have it uh, symmetrical, you can see there's like a line there. If you wanted to have them uh, the same, it looks like you maybe could do that. In here for the shoulders, again, really reminding me of the Obsidian Fury because you have a couple like levels of the shoulder armor here. You have this bit which will move up a little bit like that and then like the main kind of side shoulder armor which will move uh, like along with the shoulder joint itself there as well. That said, the shoulder armor and just overall really wide shoulders of this design of the torso as well are going to inhibit the arms from going any higher than that so you're not even going to get 90 degrees upwards mobility out of that. But you can rotate the arm there at the top and then double joint in the elbow is going to give you again more than 90 degrees but not a super full bend there. The wrist is just on a ball joint. Again, you have the binder parts up inside there as well, which will open out. And then here on the back, you also have these bits, which I think it said in the manual, these are supposed to be thrusters. These actually extend down just a little bit. There you go, just carefully pull those down a little bit so then you can then angle them back like that to have those pointed a little bit backwards. Again, really cool detail. You can see with that detail up inside there, very cool. For the midsection, it may not look like there's a whole lot there, but it does actually have a pretty nice bend here. So backwards like that, and then forwards, you can get a really nice forward ab crunch there so once again here's just kind of like standard normal and then crunched forward is really quite nice side to side however gonna be pretty non-existent and then rotation also is going to be a bit of a problem as you can really only rotate it just a tiny bit side to side down here in the hips you can really only get the legs spread out to about there as they're now just colliding in with the side binders there so you can't get the legs spread out very far but bringing that really far forward all the way up like that is not going to be a problem at all. And then we have a nice double joint in the knee there with some separating knee armor for that, which is really nice. So really nice articulation there in the legs. And then down here at the ankles, you have a little bit of side to side there. Forward and back is going to be pretty much non-existent, but really cool design for the feet here. This is personally the, uh, something that I like about this design. This kind of high heeled, really small feet design is something that I usually like for kits. And while the ankle doesn't move forward or back very much, you can actually point the toe down a little bit like that. So you can point the toe uh, like that. And then you have some nice detail there up underneath the feet as well. Now, while I really like the design of these feet, I don't think that the overall proportions of it match really well. You have this really big buff upper body and then the legs are actually kind of small, I think, in comparison. I think I would have liked this design a little bit more if it had a little bit more human-esque sort of proportions, basically having a little bit more uh, bulk there in the legs as well to match the upper body. So as you can see there's some definite pros and cons there in terms of the articulation. Some areas where it really shines, other areas where it's definitely going to be pretty inhibited by the design and that's kind of unfortunate. It's going to make posing the kit a little bit tricky depending on the kind of pose that you want to go for. Uh, but that said, I think it's just such a cool looking design that you really don't have to do a whole lot with it in terms of the posing to make the make it look really cool on your shelf. As with any Kotobukiya kit, there are a handful of seam lines all over the kit as well, and so you will have a, a good amount of work to, to put in uh, to get rid of those for this kit, unfortunately. But there's a lot of really nice detail there, and that should make this look really nice when it's all painted up. Even if you aren't going to paint it, doing a little bit of panel lining on it now, you might think it's like how you're going to panel line on black, but it's not super black. I think uh, it's just a dark gray. Definitely going in with some black panel liner on that uh, would be pretty nice, even if you aren't going to paint it. If you're going to paint it, of course, then you know that kind of depends on what color you're going to end up painting it but basically in a nutshell what you've got here is a pretty cool design with some very interesting gimmicks to it some unique gimmicks to it with the into weapon and uh the extended parts that come out of the binders like that look really cool uh and it all looks really nice but it, again it just has a really high price tag for it so it's just gonna be one of those things that if you're really into this and you really like the design and you really like maybe like if you're really a big fan of the series and you wanted to collect a bunch of these then I would definitely recommend checking the kit out. This is my first time building a full Metal Panic kit from Kotobukiya and definitely I think Bandai's versions of the Arbalest and the Gernsback are nicer just in terms of just kind of the overall amount of details and the part separation on them is, is probably equal to this kit in a way but Bandai's versions have less seam lines and I think better articulation just kind of overall a little bit more solid. 
as you might expect, but I don't think that Bandai is going to ever make this particular design, so if you really wanted uh, a kit of the Belial here, it seems like this is probably going to be your only option, as I kind of doubt that Aoshima will make one either. But I think that's going to pretty much do it for the review, guys. Of course, if you have any other further questions or comments, or if there's something I missed, feel free to let me know down in the comment section below. Again, thank you to USA Gundam Store for sponsoring the review and making it possible. Looking forward to hearing what you guys think of the kit in the comment section. And with that, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Hey! Thanks for watching, guys. Remember, if you want to check the kit out for yourself, you can head over to USA Gundam Store. Use that coupon code ZAKURILIUS10. Save yourself 10%. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.